గత కొన్ని సంవత్సరాలుగా చూస్తే అంటే ఇంటర్నెట్ వాడకం విరివిగా పెరుగుతున్న ఈ క్రమంలో అంటే వాట్సాప్లు ఫేస్బుక్ అండ్ డిఫరెంట్ సోషల్ నెట్వర్కింగ్లు అలాగే మనం బ్రౌజ్ చేసే వెబ్సైట్లు పెరుగుతున్నవి అండ్ సమాచారం షేర్ చేసుకోవటం కానీ పంపించడం కానీ ఇమెయిల్స్ అలాగే డిజిటల్ మొబైల్లు అంటే ఇవన్నీ పెరుగుతున్న ఈ క్రమంలో నిఘా వ్యవస్థలు కొన్ని నిఘా సంస్థలు ఈ నిఘా యంత్రాంగాన్ని ఎలా సృష్టించినాయి అవి మన సమాచారాన్ని తోటి వాళ్ళు ఒక నిఘా యంత్రాంగాన్ని ఎలా సృష్టించి ఎలా ఎక్స్ప్లాయిట్ చేస్తున్నారు అంటే ముఖ్యంగా ప్రజాస్వామ్యాన్ని ఎలా ధ్వంసం చేస్తున్నారు అనే దాని మీద చర్చ ఒక దశాబ్ద కాలంగా జరుగుతుంది అయితే మొదట్లో ఈ చర్చ దీనికి సంబంధించిన చర్చ కేవలం కొన్ని కొన్ని సంస్థలకే పరిమితం అయ్యేది అంటే డేటా ప్రొటెక్షన్ మీద ఫైట్ చేస్తున్న స్వేచ్ఛ ఫ్రీ సాఫ్ట్వేర్ మూమెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా ఇలాంటి కొన్ని సంస్థలకు మీద పరిమితం అయింది యాక్చువల్లీ ఒక పది సంవత్సరాల క్రితం కానీ ఇప్పుడు మన ఇంటర్నెట్ వాడకం ఎంత పెరిగిందంటే వీటన్నిటి గురించి అందరూ విస్తారంగా చర్చించుకోవటం మొదలు పెట్టారనమాట ఈ క్రమంలో పెగాసిస్ అనేది మన ముందుకు వచ్చింది కాకపోతే ఈ పెగాసిస్ ఇప్పటి వరకు జరిగినటువంటి కొన్ని రెవల్యూషన్స్ జరిగినాయి ఆల్రెడీ అంటే ఈ ఎలా ఈ నిఘా సంస్థలు నిఘా వ్యవస్థలు ప్రజాస్వామ్యాన్ని ఎలా ధ్వంసం చేస్తున్నాయి అనే దాని మీద కొన్ని రెవల్యూషన్స్ గత దశాబ్ద కాలంలో జరిగినాయి అందులో ముఖ్యంగా మనకు తెలిసింది అడ్వర్డ్ స్నోడెన్ రెవల్యూషన్ ద అండ్ గ్లోబల్ సర్వేలెన్స్ అంటే నేషనల్ సెక్యూరిటీ ఆఫ్ ఏజెన్సీ అంటే అమెరికా ఇంటెలిజెన్స్ సిస్టమ్ పక్క దేశాలు అంటే ఇప్పుడు మనం వాడుతున్నటువంటి సోషల్ నెట్వర్కింగ్ ఫేస్బుక్ లేకపోతే జీమెయిల్ వీటన్నిటి ద్వారా మన సమాచారాన్ని ఎలా ప్రిజర్వ్ చేసి ఎలా స్పై చేస్తున్నాయి దాని ద్వారా దేశాల్లోని ప్రజాస్వామ్యాన్ని ఎలా ధ్వంసం చేస్తున్నాయి నాశనం చేస్తున్నాయి అనేది ఒక పెద్ద రెవల్యూషన్ జరిగింది అంటే అడ్వర్ స్నోడెన్ చేసింది అది అందరికీ తెలిసిందే ఆ తర్వాత మనం కేంబ్రిడ్జ్ జర్నలిటిగా అంటే ఫేస్బుక్ సమాచారాన్ని యూజ్ చేసుకొని ట్రంప్ మొదటిసారి అదే ప్రెసిడెంట్గా ఎలా గెలవడానికి దోహదం చేసింది ఇవన్నీ మనకి చూస్తూ ఉన్నాం వాటన్నిటిలో ఇంకా మన పెగాసిస్ అనేది వాటన్నిటికీ ఒక వికృత రూపం అని చెప్పచ్చు ఎలా అంటే ఇప్పటి వరకు జరిగిందంతా ఒక మాస్ సర్వేలెన్స్ అంటే వ్యక్తిగత టార్గెటెడ్ సర్వేలెన్స్ అంతగా జరగలేదు ఎక్కువగా మాస్ సర్వేలెన్స్ జరిగింది అంటే ఏంటి ఇక్కడ ఈ మతం వాళ్ళు ఉన్నారు ఈ కులం వాళ్ళు ఉన్నారు ఇక్కడ బ్లాక్స్ ఉన్నారు వైట్స్ ఉన్నారు ఇక్కడ ఇన్కమ్ ఇంత జనరేట్ చేసే వాళ్ళు ఉన్నారు వాళ్ళ మీద స్పై తోటి సో వాళ్ళని వాళ్ళ భావజాలాన్ని ఒకవైపుగా టర్న్ చేయాలంటే మనం ఎలాంటి సమాచారాన్ని ఇవ్వాలి ఎలాంటి ఎత్తుగడలు ఇలా జరిగింది స్పై అంత ఎక్కువగా ఎక్కువ శాతం కానీ ఇప్పుడు జరుగుతున్నది ఎంత ఘోరమైనది ఎంత వికృత రూపం అంటే ప్రభుత్వాలు డైరెక్ట్గా ఎవరైతే వాయిస్ రైజ్ చేస్తున్నారు ఎవరైతే వాళ్ళకి అడ్డం అనుకుంటున్నారో వాళ్ళ మీద డైరెక్ట్గా స్పై చేసి ప్రజాస్వామ్యాన్ని పూర్తిగా నాశనం చేసే ఒక ప్రక్రియ అని చెప్పుకోవచ్చు దీని గురించి కొంచెం చెప్పుకోవాలి అంటే ఈ పెగాసిస్ అనేది ఇజ్రాయిల్ దేశంలోని ఎన్ఎస్ఓ అనే సంస్థ ఈ స్పైవేర్ని సృష్టించింది వాళ్ళు దీన్ని సైబర్ వెపన్ అంటున్నారు అనమాట అంటే ఏంటి అంటే వాళ్ళు చెప్పేది ఏంటి అంటే ఈ సైబర్ వెపన్ని మేము ఉగ్రవాదాన్ని టెర్రరిజాన్ని అరికట్టడానికి కేవలం కొన్ని దేశాలకు మాత్రం ఇస్తాం అంటే ఇది ఇండివిజువల్ వ్యక్తులకి ఇవ్వము కొన్ని దేశ ఇష్యూస్ ఐ ఆమ్ నాట్ గోయింగ్ టు టాక్ టు యూ సో మచ్ అబౌట్ ద టెక్నాలజీ ఆఫ్ పెగసస్ బికాస్ ఐ ఆమ్ నాట్ కాంపిటెంట్ టు టాక్ టు యూ అబౌట్ ద టెక్నాలజీ ఆఫ్ ఇట్ and i thought pramod gave you a very succinct very succinct and very very sharp presentation of what this pegasus is about and what it does i want to look at the larger background the privacy democracy rights and freedom which are threatened by not one but many pegasus kind of packages they are democracy is not a software package the people who wrote the code which you call constitution of india they were freedom fighters hmm? they fought for the rights for the democracy for the human rights and fundamental rights of the indian people and gave you one of the finest democratic constitutions in the world today that constitution is severely endangered heavily undermined by a very large number of actors and pegasus comes as a whole new level 
to the attack on democracy to the attack on privacy to the attack on fundamental rights on human rights uh, i suppose many of you already know it but what what is this word pegasus it comes from greek mythology it is about a winged horse telugu lo i think rekkala gurram an cheptaru adi horse with wings the other thing that exists actually as pegasus is the constellation the star constellation called pegasus so i mean my knowledge or technical knowledge of pegasus is limited to those two things yeah but um it is uh, it is the latest stage in the creation of a super surveillance state and now see it also does not make sense for me to talk about the technology of pegasus to a large number of btech students and engineers but i think that you are the very people who have to pose yourself a couple of questions what sort of society do we want to live in what sort of institutional national framework do we want to live in democracy implies rule of law it implies rule of law it implies fundamental rights including the right to privacy it's not just about elections every 5 years if you you know we are in the 75th year of our independence we'll complete that year next august 15 but i have been doing a number of interviews and stories on india's last living freedom fighters the youngest of them is 93 the oldest of them is 104 they're alive two weeks ago i met uh, two few weeks ago i met n sankaraya who completed 100 years and chief minister stalin of tamil nadu called on him to present him the equivalent of tamil nadu's bharat ratna but in all the interviews i have done with these people captain bhau the man who led the greatest train robbery in indian history when they looted the british train and looted the payroll of the bombay presidency and distributed that money to starving peasants and workers during the bengal famine yeah many all of them you ask them what did you fight for they don't say we just fought to throw out the british they don't say that they say we fought for a great society we fought for a good society we fought for democracy and equality and liberty and fraternity there's a very beautiful essay by Baba Sahib Ambedkar on how all liberty, equality, fraternity, all of them are important. You can't just take liberty and ignore the other two. One of the, Captain Bhau, Ramchandra Shripati Lad, who was the founder of the Tufan Sena, an underground armed wing of the Prati Sarkar, 1943, the peop, farmers and workers of Satara in India, maharashtra declared independence from british rule koraput did that midnapur did that chitagong did that but the bulk of our succeeding generations grow up as foreigners in their own country we know so little about who these people were what they did captain bau told me when i was congratulating him he he turned he began his 100th year on june 22 when i spoke first to captain bhau and congratulating uh, congratulated him on fighting for india's for for india's independence and freedom he corrected me he said you're not right we fought for independence and freedom we 
achieved independence we fought for independence and freedom we achieved independence freedom is still the monopoly of very few that that insight one of the most beautiful political science formulations that i have ever heard comes from a man who was just a small two acre farmer who led the people of satara into battle against the british every one of them will tell you we fought for human dignity we fought for dignity we fought for the right to lead our lives with dignity the discussions i have had with them give me such an enriched understanding of what is democracy it's not an election every 5 years won by the party that gets 87% of the electoral bonds hmm? now look at the wonderful thing in the electoral bonds the people the multi millionaires the crore patis who buy electoral bonds they are guaranteed privacy and secrecy they are guaranteed secrecy you cannot ask who gave 85% of money to one political party those people have complete privacy they have but supreme court judges who give dissenting judgments activists who stand for ordinary and poor people they are not they are not in any way entitled to freedom to justice to the most basic promises of the indian constitution which begins by promising justice and equality for all social economic political a much richer understanding of what is democracy a much richer understanding of what is rule of law if we look at who were the targets of as pramod pointed out the astonishing diversity of the targets three four things come out okay on the one end a supreme court judge he was serving then on the other end a virologist one of india's leading virologists in the christian medical college vellore gagandeep kang all of you have seen her on television she has been under pegasus surveillance why on earth what on earth are you doing this for in what interest which national interest is one of india's leading virologists so important to this country's vaccine effort to to our research effort on vaccines how does this person come under pegasus surveillance and her phone has been hacked in 2018 hmm? in 2018 so this extraordinary um again i'm saying do not take pegasus and isolate it as one package if we deal with pegasus there is no problem pegasus has given us an opportunity to do a post mortem on what is the problem pegasus has put the spotlight on the post mortem on the autopsy just like covid 19 has given us a brilliant autopsy of the corpse of indian society pegasus has given us incredible insights in how we are running a corporate authoritarian state these technologies and this is a very serious question for all you techies hmm? i work a lot with young techies because uh, i run the people's archive of rural india and it is entirely possible it it exists entirely because a hundred young techies of your age group did free labor and built this they did free many of them are with swecha they did free labor and built us a platform i believe worth at least 2.5 to 3 crores worth of input the question is not 
technology in itself the question is what do you want to do with it why did you get into this field did you get into this field because you want to connect with your society because you want a more just society because you want to use technology as it has been used several times for something more meaningful greater and higher in its aims and objectives or did you get into technology to help the corporate takeover of indian democracy from the individual voter from the ordinary indian okay already you consider just consider i believe that the kind of things that are happening with technology focus on the central problem of india in the last 20 years and that is the incredible growth of inequality who is able to afford and use these technologies who do they use them against labor leaders are there in this list farmers leaders the leaders of the protesters in delhi singhu tikri shah jahanpur their names are on these lists whatsapp by the way i i hope i don't i see everybody is still using whatsapp i threw it out more than a year ago i use signal whatsapp admits that it was the entry gate for more than 1400 1428 or something like that it was the entry gate for penetration of 1428 phones or devices with pegasus but that's not the only device and before that as pramod mentioned you saw what happened with cambridge analytica facebook tries to look very innocent but the scale on which that data was misused tells you in our own country without pegasus anything look at the incredible mess we have made of people's lives with the aadhar card where this highly confidential personal data please in mumbai's lamington road you can buy it for 500 rupees a cd okay you can buy aadhar data for 500 rupees a cd as and when new batches of aadhar data come to the central database there are people say your data your personal life your personal information is available on some cd for 500 rupees hmm. no one has made an assessment of the extent of identity theft that has been perpetrated under this okay there are many processes going on and each of them is contributing to deepening and deepening and deepening the inequalities so don't isolate this revelation revelation as separate from what is going on in our society understand that this revelation gives you a microscope and a telescope to look at what is going on it is the new level but it works in conjunction with many many other actions that we are taking the pegasus the nso group tells you that they sell these technologies only to select national governments not to individuals i frankly you know when the national governments are acting as the dalals of adani and ambani and birla and tata what difference does it make and i don't believe that they are not selling it to private players i don't believe this or i don't believe in any case it is absolutely untrue to say that private players have no access to uh, um, uh, to this surveillance system because the simple question arises who are you spying on farmers leaders for are you spying on them for parliament of india or are you spying on them for ambani and adani for those for whom you pass those laws so even if the private even if the private party does not obtain the surveillance system directly from the gov- from pegasus 
they obviously have very strong access to it through government governments for whom they gave the funding for the elections but their names are kept secret you are living in a very frightening world and you have to decide those of you who are techies or will be techies what do i want to do with these skills you are the most skilled 1% of the world's population you are the most skilled 1% of the world's population what do you want to do with that do you want to do something for your society as captain bow said we fought for independence and freedom we achieved independence freedom is still the monopoly of the few so what are we are we looking what you could be looking at is how we fight for the democratization of the digital the democratization of cyberspace when the internet first came oh there was so much rom- there was so much romanticism internet is giving everybody a voice the internet gives you a voice it does not guarantee that anybody listens to you hmm. the internet does not ensure that anybody listen yes the internet does not um, ensure that anybody listens to you that is also the digital monopolies are the largest monopolies in human history they are greater than the monopolies of oil rail air gold they are much greater monopolies please look google search 78% of all search 68% of all online auction ebay and now those seven companies have become four or three okay that kind of frightening control of the what we call the free internet that kind of fri- a handful of corporations are controlling the net now why do i say that the digital monopolies and these horrible rogue techies like the nso why do i say that these are the greatest monopolies in history i'll take i'll take please hmm. why do i say that these are the greatest monopolies in history what is what, what do they have that no other monopoly ever had in history what do they have anyone wants to answer that question what makes the digital monopoly what is the special thing that they have that no one else has no other monopoly media monopoly television monopoly radio monopoly none of these monopolies had one thing that the digital monopolies have these guys own and trade your personal data that is the difference no other monopoly in history had that no other monopoly had 4 billion human beings data with them no other monopoly in history could intervene in your personal data hack into it change it they could censor it if they could find you if they could find your data here your data is in their possession <laughs> you are you are trying to get your data you know on facebook you may have actually it is the inter- social media is run on an entirely anti social mercenary basis you may have you may have 1 lakh followers on twitter does every tweet you go put out does it guarantee that your 1 lakh followers will you know you want to make some post special post on facebook or twitter what per, what percentage as, as i'm running a website and i'm trying to publicize the work our people are doing which is free it is not commercial what percentage of our audience can we reach through their ads 2% 3% maximum i can reach free beyond that for every click i'm paying something 
గూగుల్ క్లిక్ గూగుల్ యాడ్స్ ఫార్మర్స్ ప్రొటెస్ట్ మీద దే వర్ యు నో దో గూగుల్స్ వెన్ ఇఫ్ యూ వాంటెడ్ టు అడ్వర్టైజ్ వాట్ యు వర్ డూయింగ్ వెన్ ఇట్ ఫస్ట్ బిగాన్ ఇట్ వాస్ థర్టీన్ సెంట్స్ అ క్లిక్ దెన్ యాజ్ ది యాజిటేషన్ ఇంటెన్సిఫైడ్ ట్వంటీ సెవెన్ సెంట్స్ అ క్లిక్ దెన్ నౌ ఫిఫ్టీ వన్ ఫిఫ్టీ టూ సెంట్స్ అ క్లిక్ నౌ లుక్ ఎట్ ఇట్ యూ హ్యావ్ వన్ ల్యాక్ ఫాలోవర్స్ i am the company i don't allow you to reach your 1 lakh followers unless you pay me something i am i am i'm it's like i am holding your bank account and each time you want to make a withdrawal or a deposit you have to pay me something okay that this you know suppose tomorrow you send an email to your friend i'm going to sao paulo brazil for a holiday in the next 10 minutes how many advertisements will be on your email from 5 star 3 star 1 star homestay resorts in sao paulo you buy a book of amazon how many hundred ads will you get for other books people have a handful of companies have access to all your data it's not that they are invading you and taking your data you have deposited your data with them by participating in their structures whenever there is that level of monopoly of information there is no democracy there is no there is no democracy when incredible levels of inequality make it possible for a handful of corporations to rule the world and those who rule the world of information and knowledge and the digital space they are the most unequal leaders of all and they are the greatest elements remember no other no other monopoly in history had the right or the capability to harness your local data to harvest your data to sell it and by the way there are certain things you want your own data is processed and given back to you for a fee that also happens you are paying for your own stuff in the internet by the way all of us are consumers we are also all producers right so this is something try understanding this process what's going on with your original history of a fight for an independent secular democratic state where the first words of your constitution and the directive principles of state policy which were put in by people who gave their lives for your freedom say equality and justice to all social economic and political now if you look at the farmers agitation that is going on i said it isn't pegasus and technology in isolation all the other things that are happening around us all the other stuff that is happening around us is part of a complex these acts are and actions are happening together but all these acts and actions the changes of law in parliament the inequality factor all these act together towards one end that is further deepening your inequality you know in let me give you an by talking about inequality let me give you the example of the parliament of india hmm? ever since 2004 you are all aware that we are the candidate has to file an affidavit stating my total wealth is so many lakhs so many thousands so many crores that is the law very good law but it does not demand attachment of your income tax returns so you can name any figure the election affidavit is giving you your self estimate of your worth and people karodpatis become very modest when it comes to that because tomorrow the income tax department will come and say this is what you have said but look at what has happened and it will tell you what has happened in your society 
since 1991 when we embraced a path of development when we embraced a set of policies that to has taken our inequality in indian society from between independence and 1980 income inequality in india fell it dropped from 1990 it has increased so much so incredibly high that the last these levels of inequality were seen were around uh, 1991 sorry 1921 1921-22 we saw the levels of inequality remember that those levels of inequality led to a national struggle now look at parliament composition of parliament <coughs> from 1991 it starts changing but we have data from 2004 electoral affidavit in 2004 the association for democratic reforms they they are the be- biggest and the best electoral watchdog body in india <coughs> adr association for democratic reforms they analyze every election affidavit it is open to you you can get on to the election commission's website you can get on to adr's website you can read everybody's election affidavit see the amount of lying that goes on and some very creative writing very very creative writing yeah uh your former chief minister chandra babu naidu assessed the value of his flat in jubilee hills at 23 lakhs when he filed that affidavit 5000 people wrote to him saying telling we will pay you five times that amount and buy it hmm. anyway so this sort of nonsense goes on but still it showed us in 2004 32% of all mps were crorepatis 32% 2009 2009 53% 53% of all mps in lok sabha in 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 parliament totally were karodpatis and reelected mps showed asset increases of 150 to 6000% andhra pradesh holds the proud record in 2014 okay in 2009 one one gentleman uh, from raylasima who had who showed a, a filed an affidavit of 6800 crores his wealth now so the percentage of karodpatis in indian parliament 2009 on the basis of electoral affidavit was 53% 2014 election guess what 82% of all mps 82% of all mps were karodpatis 2019 election they disappointed me it only went to they could keep up that growth rate 88% 88.2% of all mps in parliament are karodpatis now these are the people these 543 men and women are going to represent the poorest people on earth are they going to represent the poorest they are representing the poorest people on earth they've got elected there and they have a right to say we are the representative of the people in what in what fashion please tell me how a gentleman of 6000 self declared worth of 6800 
a self declared worth of 6800 crores is going to represent the woman agricultural laborer who seeks work on the nregs for 200 rupees a day how is she going to how how is that person ever going to represent her needs her aspirations her requirement her human rights her democratic rights please tell me that man who had brought 6800 crores on his affidavit 88% of 88% of uh, parliament is going to represent more than 50% of the population who earn less than 3 dollars a day ask yourself whether this is realistic whether it is optimistic or whether it is plain stupid to imagine that this will happen those inequalities now let me give you that kind of inequality in larger terms not just parliament all of you have heard of forbes magazine forbes have you heard of it yes. forbes magazine is the oracle of global capitalism every year they track number of dollar billionaires this is what captain bow said we fought we achieved independence not freedom freedom is a monopoly freedom is something to be paid for watch in 1991 when we adopted the new economic policies there were no dollar billionaires in india last year 2020 there were 140 in 2004 there were 8 2008 there were 12 2012 there were 53 in 2019 there were 102 and in the pandemic year in a year when gdp shrank 7.7% you are all aware of that government of india figure gdp shrank 7.7% but the wealth of 140 individuals doubled to 596 billion dollars which is 23% of your gdp 22.7% of your gdp is in the hands of 140 individuals in the pandemic year when gdp fell by 7.7% mr mukesh ambani's wealth went up 167% 129% and mr gautam adani's total net worth went up 467% he's got all your gvk airports everything now okay 467% now india added 38 new billionaires in that very large number were pharma health sector billionaires that means while people were dying in lakhs somebody was making huge money there are in the 140 billionaires there are 24 health healthcare sector billionaires and the top 10 of those 24 if you read the people's archive of rural india we have given you all these figures in telugu also please you will find it in telugu also we publish in 13 languages we publish free of charge we do not take subscription fee we particularly aim stood at students and in indian languages for those who cannot afford therefore we keep no subscription fee but the point the point is that um the 24 billionaires out of 140 are from healthcare sector and the top 10 among them the top 10 among them added to their wealth on average 10 healthcare pharma people every day on average together they added 5 billion rupees to their wealth 5 billion 5 followed by 9 zeros okay 
here were people dying without vaccine here were people dying without health care here were people who could not get a bed in the hospital everybody sitting in this auditorium has had some experience some relative some close friend some brother or sister or mother or father whom you have run from hospital to hospital for admission people who paying in the black market for oxygen hmm? but those who run the health own the healthcare sector privatized healthcare sector every day of the pandemic they added just the top 10 added 5 billion rupees every day mr mukesh ambani's wealth is 84.5 billion dollars you know what that is that is equal to the gdp of punjab punjab's gdp is 85.5 billion dollars mr ambani's is 84.5 but mr ambani's value is growing 120% a year punjab's gdp is going to fall because you're going to take the wealth of those farmers and give it to mr ambani enta anyayam chudandi what kind of injustice that who oh, that is hmm? what kind of injustice now who is who is now i ask you again who would be beginning from planting pegasus on the phones of the farmer leaders hmm is national security going to gain or is ambani going to gain and adani going to gain this this pegasus certainly certainly was used in the bengal and kerala elections and you can see opposition leaders bengal kerala tamil nadu they were all on the list of penetrated and hacked phones you are looking the one element of democracy in india which was true and vibrant was electoral democracy now that also we are destroying as a reporter i have covered every general election in this country from 1980 to 2014 i did not personally cover 2019 but 1980 to 2014 i and i was always so proud i was so proud of our democracy in electoral terms because you know anybody who was able to catch the imagination of the people could defeat the richest and most powerful candidates when i was still a student a few years younger than you in 1971 mr nawal tata contested from the richest constituency from the richest constituency of mumbai south mumbai where all the millionaires live i mean there there are very few but they are most prominent richest constituency south bombay he contested against him an unknown trade union leader by the way george fernandes also contested naam ke vaste but an unknown tra- trade union leader kailas narayan sarang came and defeated a man who the newspaper would not even carry his name at least george fun at least george fernandes they mentioned he is there otherwise the entire speculation in the media was what will be the margin of naval tata what will be the margin kailas narayan sarang defeated naval tata by a very fine margin for 1971 hmm. why because the imagination of the public was caught by bank nationalization credit to farmers abolition of privy purses and princely states and princely privileges and princely titles garibi hatao the imagination of the public was caught by the promises of the indian constitution whether they might be delivered they were not that is another matter but the election was fought on that basis where are you fighting on on what basis are you now fighting election the grand ram mandir fulwama hmm that is what you are now fighting the elections on 
more and more power these are the 140 billionaires the money they put into electoral bonds eight more than 85% went to one political party please understand that we are dismantling where we were di we were dismantling democracy brick by brick but now you get something like pegasus that brings a cyber bulldozer to the edifice of democracy that is how you have to locate and and understand what is happening there hmm. now look at what the government is saying see this democracy as i am saying again and again <coughs> it means the rule of law human rights including the right to life the right to privacy the right to control your own personal information and data that it is solely your right to do that which was already undermined by now you are not only able to extract data from someone's phone or laptop you are able to plant false data on those phones and laptops like you have done to the victims of the bima koregaon riot to rona wilson gautam navlaka and others where rona wilson's computer some of the some of the top cons arsenal consulting firms some of the top consulting firms in the world have confirmed and studies by washington post and new york times who also submitted this to others have confirmed that stuff was planted emails were planted words were planted on rona wilson's laptop as a result of which he is in jail without trial now for more i don't know two years almost he has been there two years or more now is this the technocratic is this the techno nightmare that you want to build that is what i i want to ask the young techies because i know that that was not their purpose i know the enthusiasm with which people in the age group 19 to 28 built my own people's archive of rural india for free i know what they wanted they wanted to build a better society they wanted to they helped us because we are a journalism website that looks wholly dedicated wholly to rural india to farmers to laborers to weavers to laborer to agricultural workers to the landless to the adivasis to the dalits because of that commitment these techies came and built our website for free so i know therefore i'm saying the rest of you i know i know what your natural inclination is please see how it is endangered and perverted by this sort of by this sort of mischief that is going on uh the how does the government react to it by the way the control of information becomes central in all of this today the largest newspapers in the country the times of india is the second largest english newspaper in the world it used to be the largest they are totally quiet on this they are even supportive of the government on this right they are not at all interested because their own monopolies are threatened by information having free flow today we are in a very peculiar situation on media information privacy and knowledge you know in the freedom struggle do you know that rest of india got to know about jallianwala bag one month after it happened yeah total censorship of the media including times statesmen everybody who were willingly censored jallianwala bag the horror of jallianwala bag was not reported but for two groups of people who were those the underground revolutionary press the underground revolutionary press and chitranjan das who who sent people to the hearings on uh, dwyer's actions and every day had two stenographers writing down what was said in those hearings where dwyer and dyer admitted to many things and they put it in the english press 
and it was the everywhere in the world the underground press told people about jallianwala bagh in 1943 you know everybody says bengal famine 1943 that is wrong it was the bengal famine of 1942 it is only in 1943 that the statesman starts covering the bengal famine why because the underground press jugantar new age people's democracy all these publications are writing about it finally the editor of the statesman has written james he has written in his memoirs yes we kept quiet for about a year because we thought the government is a good source it's a good government it will do something we kept quiet for a year because we were not quite sure how bad it really was now here's the funny thing that the world was dependent on the indian underground media to tell them what was happening today <laughs> we are dependent on the french media the european media to know what is happening in pegasus please look in the interest of human decency consider how all the other countries and governments are reacting to pegasus macron that whole technology ministry has been turned upside down in france macron has ordered the highest level enquiries into pegasus the the, the government of israel has said, pegasus is connected to the defense ministry the defense ministry pays pegasus bills the defense ministry uh, of israel vets what pegasus projects are they know exactly what this company is doing they have sent a senior minister to germany to pacify the government of germany they have sent senior ministers and top officials to france and germany to pacify those countries but in india they haven't sent anyone because the government is doing the pacification in india they don't need to cover their butt because the government will do the lying for them please understand how disgraceful that is how completely debased an understanding and level of democracy it is hmm. the government has taken the position in court there was no unauthorized surveillance so that means there was authorized surveillance who authorized it can you say that no agency of the government of india purchased pegasus please understand this the number of targets ranging from opposition leaders in bengal and delhi to a virologist in christian medical college vellore it argues that not one agency but multiple agencies are doing this huh why the hell does nia want virologists uh, you know phone to be penetrated why on earth does uh, you know the uh, enforcement directorate or whoever it is want the phone penetrated on of an opposition leader in bengal it means that not one government agency but multi multiple agencies dealing with different issues different strata of society have been doing this now the cost of it also argues the millions and millions of dollars that no one agency in india has the budget for it it has to be the black fund the slush fund in defense and policing matters they have that that fund comes from the government of india yeah but the government is saying no unauthorized surveillance they are telling the court we will do what has to be done in the interest of national security the home ministry has not authorized any such thing actually that contradicts what they said in 2018 where they said the home ministry has issued a circular for this 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 anti national activity so at every stage they are lying but the media are not going to challenge them because those who are one the media interests are tied to them again 
the media's interests are tied so closely to ambani and adani why how many of you know that mr mukesh ambani is the biggest owner of media in india i hate disappointing all the proud telugus here but your etv except for the telugu channels all your etv channels are owned by mr mukesh ambani did you know that etv gujarati etv hindi etv marathi etv malayalam they are not owned by mr ramoji rao that was more than 10 years ago they are owned by mr ambani now he is the owner of network 18 the biggest network of media in the country secondly he is the largest media of owner in the country third those media that he does not own he is the biggest advertiser now in the pandemic industry advertising has fallen very badly government advertising ratio has gone up so all these media are compromised and dependent on government advertising n ram wrote three articles devastating pieces on rafael in the hindu after that you see what happened to hindus government advertising uh, if there is a lesson for everybody else you mess with me i'll show you what will happen to you hmm. so that is that is another level of the problem so you have obviously a government that is lying through its hat that is making a mockery of the supreme court's questions did you use pegasus there was no unauthorized surveillance of anything anywhere if that is if pegasus is authorized surveillance there is nothing left in the meaning of the word privacy and your personal information if that is authorized surveillance you're gone so you know you are a different you are a different society please note that in the last 2 years in the last year major indexes index of democracy we democracy in sweden freedom house in the usa reporters sans frontiers in india in uh, france all have lowered india's ranking and i am involved in one of the most mysterious commissions that you will ever hear about i think several of you know that last year reporters sans frontiers world press freedom index vinara dan gurinchi rank 142 india's rank 142 below some authoritarian african countries also okay dictatorial state. anyway 142 rank it used to be it was never great it used to be 105 but last year it fell to 142 we democracy reclassified india it called it electoral autocracy freedom house said partially democratic out the indian government got very upset at the highest level they formed index monitoring committee who ordered the committee union cabinet secretary most powerful bureaucrat he sent a letter to the information and broadcasting ministry saying form a committee we must rebut this press index then they formed a committee on press freedom and 11 out of 13 members are senior bureaucrats two journalists one rajat sharma the other yours truly they asked me will you come on to it i said i will but i will i am not here to respond to index of world press freedom index ranking of 142 because if i were doing a ranking it would be much lower than 142 so i am coming to study the situation of press freedom i don't care what a bunch of people in france think i want to know what indian journalists think i want to know what indian citizens experience so i agreed to be on that committee i was the only one who ever spoke in the meetings 
on issues the other journalist attended two meetings and then said he was too busy you know the rest of us are unemployed we have nothing to do and he never spoke a word in the two meetings then they expanded the committee member to uh, 15 brought on two more journalists whom i had never heard of and also they also remained silent then they created a draft report which was essentially to rebut the world press freedom index ranking then i wrote a note of dissent and i said i don't want reconciliation i want you to carry my note as an independent note in this report february 2nd after that a committee instituted on the orders of cabinet secretary the committee has vanished no member of the committee has received a communication from the committee because they can't publish that uh, more than one and a half months ago an rti has been filed on the case of the vanishing committee no reply has been given now it is in the penalty phase where if the officer does not reply he faces a fine of 250 rupees a day then also they are not replying please tell me how a high powered commission could disappear understand what society you are living in if they could do that to a committee instituted at the orders of cabinet secretary why committees journalists will disappear journalists have disappeared some of several of them have been assassinated people don't realize that dabolkar kalburgi pansare were also journalists apart from gauri lankesh dabolkar narendra dabolkar ran a magazine for 28 years rationalist magazine on august 20th i gave the memorial lecture for dabolkar after which the organization that is you know behind his murder bombarded me with 500 tweets open letters all sorts of things but that's another story then pansare retired trade unionist not retired he was still active every week wrote in the marathi press his output was higher than mine kalburgi regular columnist in the kannada press gauri top class journalist so if committees if if journalists can vanish their lives can vanish why not committees hmm. understand that this whole thing is a complex of issues coming together um the it brings you back to what is the meaning of privacy what is the meaning of freedom what is, is it the freedom is it as captain bow said only the freedom of the few look the kind of arrests that were made in the pandemic year siddiqui kappan in up arrested in october last year no bail hearing brought to a hospital suffering from covid chained to the hospital bed an accredited journalist from kerala zubair ahmed in in andamans islets what a what a situation he ro published a story confirmed story that a family that rang up a member who an, another branch of the family who were under covid the family making the call were taken into custody and quarantined the next day i don't know whether covid spreads over a telephone but they were all held in quarantine until zubair ahmed and island news published the story they were released after which zubair ahmed was arrested now they are entering your laptop and your phone and claiming that you were planning to do something 
like they arrest poor dalits in up for planning a dacoity just to make them clean the jail and the police station hmm? very common practice yeah Ex- especially around janmashtami when the jails and the police stations are very dirty now you are being arrested for your thoughts you were planning you were planning something you are being arrested for your thoughts there is no de- the last that happened was under apartheid and steve biko in south africa to major people now it's happening across the board in india that you can be arrested for thinking that you had thoughts people put one two girls in two girls in thane put one facebook post criticizing mr modi or carrying a cartoon firs are filed yeah that kind of draconian authoritarian super surveillance society and all these big digital monopolies are colluding with the government first they make some noise and say no we won't do it after that they do whatever the government wants them to do do you know that on february 5th the delhi police issued a issued a, put on a tweet thanking google and twitter for its assistance in the disha ravi case okay so these rights these issues these fundamental rights these are in your hands they they, they are in your hands uh, and it's in your choice do i want the indian democracy do i want the indian democracy that our freedom fighters fought for do i want the india that is there in my constitution in the directive principles of state policy in the fundamental rights in the preamble do i want a nation respects human rights and human dignity do i want a democracy of liberty equality and fraternity and rule of law or do i want that 140 individuals can run this nation and elect people by whatever means who will run my life monitor my every move look at this that is the choice before you and i beg you as all those techies who are about to go into this field think about this it's not just a matter of technological skill you are having in your hands the potential of strengthening or severely undermining democracy india of your constitution of your freedom struggle in the 75th year of our independence i am satisfied i know which choice you will make but the choice has to be made by you thank you thank you thank you sainath garu so ee pegasus nanedi oka isolated ga kaadu డెమోక్రటీ ని డిస్మాంటిల్ చేసే సిస్టమ్ లో దీన్ని ఎలా భాగంగా చూడాలి అండ్ గ్రోయింగ్ ఇన్ఈక్వాలిటీలో హౌ దిస్ ఈస్ హెల్పింగ్ డిజిటల్ మోనోపోలీస్ అండ్ అదర్ ఇండియన్ మోనోపోలీస్ అనేది ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ ఇట్ రియలీ వెల్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ ఆన్ బిహాఫ్ ఆఫ్ స్వేచ to break out box we live time for freedom and reality i want the freedom to set me free all illusions finding reality it's time to break out box we live time for freedom and reality i want to see the light no matter what it takes calling in the dark i want to see the light no matter what it takes crawling in the dark i want to see the light no matter what it takes crawling 
in the dark. I want to see the light, no matter what it takes, crawling in the dark. Set me free, 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 set me free. I want my freedom, set me free. All illusions finding reality. It's time to break out what we live. Time for freedom and reality. I was all alone thinking what to do. We came together to burn things up. We are the future of the nation. It's time for truth. I was all alone thinking what to do. We came together to burn things up. We are the future of the nation. It's time for truth. We want to see the light no matter what it takes. We will set all free. We want to see the light no matter what it takes. We will set all free. Set me 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 free, set me free, set me free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We want to invite Sainath Garu onto the stage and we want to present a small gift to him. Thanks.